family, friends and foes, and even foes in the family. Welcome to the standing between the living and the dead. Earlier service, another one will follow. This is Daniel White the third, uh, president of Gospel Light Society International with the White House daily reading of the Chronological Bible episode number 108. where I simply read the Word of God, the Holy Bible, in the King James Version each day in chronological order with my family, as we have done for over 33 years uh, together. This unique viewpoint, this unique Bible allows us to read the whole Bible as a single story and to see, uh, and that is a single true story for the Bible, all of it is true, and to see the unfolding of God's plan in history. For as someone wisely said, history is his story. Today, beloved, we are reading Exodus chapter 14, verse, uh, verses, we're going to start off with verse 1, and we'll just read all the way through, of course, Exodus chapter <clears throat> 14. Let's pray for the power of the Holy Ghost. Yes, to read, just to read the Holy Word and to understand it. Holy Father God in heaven, I praise you, Holy Father God, this morning for uh, blessing the earlier prayer meeting that we've already had. And uh, because of that prayer meeting, uh, things have gone smoothly so far. And I thank you for hearing and answering my prayers. And I pray, uh, Lord, uh, I hope the prayers of others. And I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that through the power of that prayer meeting earlier this morning, I pray that, Lord, you would have everything else to go smoothly, decently, and in order. Those who are just coming in, Lord, help them to pray and not listen to me pray. Help them to do the business of prayer. And so, Holy Father, God, help your people tend to the business that you gave your people to do and to cease getting entangled with the things of this world. Holy Father God, help us who are called by you to preach and to proclaim your gospel give ourselves to it and to give ourselves to the uh, to praying and to the ministry of your holy word holy father God I praise you and I thank you for your love your grace and your mercy and uh, I praise you and I thank you for your holy son the Lord Jesus Christ your Holy Spirit, and your Holy Word. 
and for all of the millions, many, as the old folks used to say, and uh, manifold blessings that you have bestowed upon us down through the years. And Holy Father God, I pray now that you would help everybody here and out there to confess their sins, their faults, and their failures. Help us all to do that unto you because you're worthy and uh, you uh, uh, you are all about us being honest. For Lord, one of the tragedies uh, in the lives of people today who even claim to be Christians is that they're liars, dishonest, and deceitful. Holy Father God, for Jesus Christ's sake, help everybody to be real with you. For Lord, if we can't be real with you, then uh, we are men and women most miserable. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive us of our sins, our faults, and our failures, as we from our hearts, by your grace, forgive those who have sinned uh, against us. Unfortunately, Lord, we all have been tainted by sin, which makes us very ugly people, no matter how beautiful we may be on the outside. Uh, Lord, all we have to do is get up close, and we can see the taint and smell the taint, and it's not a good situation. Uh, Lord, uh, and, so, no, uh, and so I am amazed this morning that you would have anything to do with us. For the truth of the matter is, Lord, many of us don't even want to have anything to do with ourselves and with others. And so, God, thank you for your grace, your mercy, and your love. And thank you for the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, which we heard sung about this morning, that it will never lose its power. Please wash and cleanse our hearts and minds, souls, spirits, and consciences in the precious blood of Christ and make us, Lord, to be whiter than snow on the inside. Crush and crucify, Lord, our flesh. The old man within us. And fill us, Lord, afresh and anew with the fullness and the power the unction and the anointing, the fruit and the liberty, Lord of your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for how when we pray, you remind us of things. Thank you, Lord, for how when we pray, you tell us to do things. Thank you, Lord, for when we pray, uh, you even make us feel better because of what you do in our hearts and minds and souls and spirits. When we pray, Lord, you uh, give us the power of peace and joy in our lives in the midst of storms and trouble. And no wonder you uh, called it peace that passeth all understanding and joy unspeakable. Uh, because it is exactly that and more. And so, Holy Father God, we pray on this beautiful Sunday morning. Lord, yes, with many people, millions of people facing some very serious weather situations just around the corner from where we are. Tornadoes did some major damage, Lord, on yesterday and yesterday evening in Texas. And Lord, uh, the states above Texas are in for another walloping, a winter-type walloping in March. And across the nation, people are going through that today, but it's still a beautiful day. And we praise you and we thank you for it. And thank you for bringing us through many storms and snares and troubles in the past. And we give you the glory, praise, and honor. And so, Lord, I pray that you would crush and crucify our wicked, evil, and ungodly flesh within us. Uh, for, Lord, uh, there's that taint again that uh, there's nothing good on the inside of us. We're just wicked, evil, and undone, and we all know it. 
even though some try to hide it and don't want to confess it and don't want to admit it, but we are. And I thank you, Lord, that once we come to grips with that, you set us free and uh, in you, and you start living in us uh, once we humble ourselves and, do, and admit how tainted and how ungodly and how stinky we really are because of sin uh, in our lives, in our sinful nature. Lord, set people free. Uh, for you have made it clear the truth will set people free, and you are the truth. Help people to believe in you today, for you are their only hope. You are our only hope. And I thank you, Lord, for giving us hope and the blessed hope that uh, the Jesus who came some 2,000 years ago, who suffered, bled, and died on the cross for our sins, was buried and rose on the third day. And we'll come again. And so Lord, so, Lord, that's my only hope, and that's the only hope of the church. And help us to keep our focus on you. Keep our eyes, help us to keep our eyes on the prize and hold on. And Holy Father God, we pray that your holy name will be glorified. Jesus Christ will be exalted. Please give us your energy and your strength, your unction and your anointing, your freedom and your liberty, and the power of your Holy Spirit. Save those who are lost. Revive those who are saved. Heal those who are sick. Comfort those who are grieving. And Lord, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and for his sake. Amen. Exodus chapter 14. Exodus chapter 14. <clears throat> Get these from him and give them to her. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, and May I say for some of you just coming on, uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome uh, to the standing between the living and the dead uh, service. And may I say to you, as I always do, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, I have the high honor and the distinct privilege and the great pleasure to read in your hearing, Thus saith the Lord at Exodus, Exodus chapter 14. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they turn and encamp before Pi-Haharoth, between Migdal and the sea over against Belzephon before it shall before it shall ye encamp by the sea for Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel they are entangled in the land. The wilderness hath shut them in. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart that he shall follow after them. And I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his host that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. And they did so. And it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled. And the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants was turned against the people. And they said, Why have we done this, that we have let Israel go from serving us? 
and he made ready his chariot and took his people with him and he took 600 chosen chariots and all the chariots of Egypt and captains over every one of them and the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh king of Egypt and he pursued after the children of Israel and the children of Israel went out with an high hand but the Egyptians pursued after them all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army and overtook them in camping by the sea beside pi Harath before Belzephon. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were sore afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. And they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die <laughs> in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. But lift thou thy rod and stretch out thine hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And I Behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them, and I will get me honor upon Pharaoh and upon all his host, upon his chariots and upon his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh. upon his chariots and upon his horsemen and the angels rather and the angel of God which went before the camp of Israel removed and went behind them and the pillar of the cloud went from before their face and stood behind them and it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel, and it was a cloud and darkness to them, but it gave light by night to these, so that the one came not near the other all the night. 
And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and made the sea dry land. And the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground. Pardon me. And the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea, even all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And it came to pass that in the morning watch the Lord looked The Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of the fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians and took off their chariot wheels that they drave them heavily so that the Egyptians said, Let us flee from the face of Israel for the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength, when the morning appeared, and the Egyptians fled against it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. And the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen, and all the host of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. There remained not so much as one of them. But the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. And Israel saw that great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians and the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. Shall we pray? Holy Father God in heaven, hallowed be your name. And Holy Father God, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And we thank you and we praise you and we give you glory for your holy word that we have just read. And we thank you for your love, your mercy, and your grace. We praise you and we thank you for your Holy Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, your Holy Spirit, <clears throat> and your Holy Word. Help us, Lord, to uh, understand your Holy Word, apply it to our lives, and uh, help us to love it more and to cherish it more. And Holy Father God, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ have your Holy Spirit uh, to help us to understand it more 
and to obey it more and to share it with others more and to preach your holy gospel from it more. And Holy Father God, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray that you would open the eyes of the blind, unstop deaf ears, and save their souls even today. Have your Holy Ghost to speak to their hearts. And Lord, help people to believe in Jesus Christ. For your glory, praise, and honor. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, when I was a young teenager, maybe 12 or 13, 14, somewhere along uh, in that uh, age, uh, period of my life. uh, For some reason, I had this notion, this idea to want to get wisdom and to get knowledge. Uh, So I set out to read the huge family Bible that back in those days, every family had in the South. I don't know about the white families because we didn't mix like that back in those days. But I know in the black community, we had a huge Bible in every home. The first thing you saw, if if they let you in the living room, was that family Bible. They also would have a picture of Jesus Christ on the wall, and then a picture of uh, JFK, and also a picture of MLK. And uh, some would even have a picture of RFK. Uh, You have that in almost every black home in the South. And so this was a huge Bible. Uh, You you don't see them today. So I set out to read the big family Bible with no help from anybody. Uh, and, uh, but for some reason I couldn't get past Genesis chapter, chapter two, maybe chapter three. I got bored to tears trying to read that Bible, read that book. I just did, had no understanding of it whatsoever. And what's so sad about it, I was raised in church. Uh, from the time I left my mother's womb, I have been in church. I can, uh, my mind can go back to when I was a little boy. I'm talking about three, four, no more, maybe two. I can still see the stained glass windows in my mind's eye of St. Paul's Church in New York, where I was born. I can, I can feel the atmosphere even, even after all these years. So it's good. Uh, for you parents uh, to take your children to church. It's a good thing. And that's what my parents did. I found out later in life that you have to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior uh, and get saved, that is, before you can understand the Bible, the Word of God. So here is how I became a Christian. And this is, I got saved uh, away from the church. I didn't get saved in the church. I didn't get saved because of my uh, traditional church upbringing. I got saved in spite of that. God... uh, had mercy upon my soul because I should be dead and in hell. There's no doubt about it. Uh, but anyway, and if, I, I, 
it's a long story, and I'm not going to tell you the whole story, but I will tell you for some reason, since I have been a little boy back in those days, I can't say I prayed it every night, but many, many nights I prayed God show me the light. I don't know why I prayed that. I just knew that with all of the religion that we had in our family, my dad was a preacher and a well-known singer, gospel singer. My mother was a preacher. We were, I was, we were raised in the Baptist tradition and the Pentecostal holiness tradition and uh, in church all of the time, but I was lost and on my way to hell, and I, I just somehow knew that what they were preaching was not the true gospel that would help people to get saved. And I, I can't tell you why. All I know is I just prayed. I would get on my knees and pray, Lord, please show me the light. I, I remember that so clearly. And uh, to this day, I cannot tell you why I did that. But anyway, on December the 19th, 1979, God showed me the light, the gospel light. He sent a man by, by the name of Michael Lewis, and he showed me from the Bible how to be truly saved. And uh, God saved my soul. And he can save your soul, too. First, dear friend, accept the fact that you are a sinner and that you have broken God's laws. And so have I. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We all have broken God's Ten Commandments. Uh, we all have sinned against God. Uh, I would venture to say that all of us have told a lie if you are of a certain age uh, and for that sin, you may not even have to be of a certain age because the Bible says that babies come out of the womb telling lies. You may have, uh, I would venture to say that you have stolen something at some point in your life, the cookie out of the cookie jar, and then you lied about it with the cookie in your mouth. Have you ever lusted after somebody or coveted after somebody or something? Have you ever been disobedient to your parents? You have dishonored your parents. I'll venture to say you you have done that if you are of a certain age. Have you ever dishonored God by taking God's name in vain? Some people don't understand that they can take God's name in vain without using God's name. We're so wicked, we try to use names, things, and words close to God or what God is about. Sometimes when you're angry and you're bitter and you say, oh, goodness, because you, you're angry or bitter at somebody, and you're trying to get back at them by saying, oh, goodness, you're really saying, you're really using God's name in vain because God is good. And then some people use the word gosh is 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 a is a slick way of trying to use God's name in vain. Some people lie on God's holy name. They know they're lying, but they try to convince people they're not lying by using God's name, the Bible, and everything else. Some people curse using God's name. And I would venture to say that uh all of us here today in the theater of the air and here have said things and done things uh, that uh, uh, that I've just mentioned <clears throat> that are wrong in God's sight. We're all sinners. Second, accept the fact that there is a penalty for sin. There is a punishment for sin. The Bible states in Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death. We die physically because of our sins. Our bodies go to a grave. 
we die because of sin, our sinful nature, and our sinful choices. We don't die because of the coronavirus. We don't die because of cancer. We don't die because of cardiac arrest. We die because of our sinful nature and uh, the sins that we all commit. And death is still a tragedy, no matter how someone dies. It is the most tragic thing known to mankind. Once someone dies who is a loved one, most people never get over it. By the grace of God, we can go on with our lives, but uh, even going through the grieving process, most people don't get over death. It is a shocker. It is a shock to the system. But worse than physical death is spiritual death in that eternal place of death called hell where if you do not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and repent of your sins in this life you will go to this awful place called hell in fact if you died right now unsaved if you died right now not believing in Jesus Christ you will go immediately to that awful place called hell. You will lift up your eyes in the torments of hell. And uh, please do not think that hell is a joke because it is not. Jesus Christ himself, the meek and lowly one, the loving one, the one who never committed a sin in word, thought, or deed, the one who went uh, about doing good for everybody and helping everybody, healing the sick, raising the dead, walking on the water. He preached more on hell than any prophet, any apostle, any writer in the Bible. Jesus Christ preached on hell more than he did about heaven. Yes, my dear friend, the meek and lowly, quiet, humble, loving Jesus Christ was a hellfire and brimstone preacher. Why did he preach on hell so much? Because he loves us and he wants us to be saved from hell. That's why he came to suffer, to bleed, and to die on the cross for our sins. He was buried and rose on the third day to save us from this awful place called hell. So this is real. This is serious. Hell is no joke. So thirdly, dear friend, accept the fact that you are on the road to hell. Jesus Christ said in Matthew 18, 8, Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life halt or maimed, rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. Hell is... A serious place, hell is a sad place. Hell is a bad place, and hell is bad news. My dear friend, it is not a joke. But I do have some good news for you. You don't have to go to hell. You can go to heaven to be with God and to be with Jesus Christ and to be with the saints of God and the angels of God when you die. If you have that desire in your heart, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou you shalt be saved. 
For Jesus Christ said the, the most loving, most important, most wonderful words ever said in the history of the world to mankind. He said in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Yes, it is that simple and yes, that easy to get saved. Salvation was not easy for God. It was not easy for Jesus Christ. Very, very painful. The most pain that any being has ever felt was felt by God and his son, Jesus Christ. And he did it for you and he did it for me. So I assure you that if you die and you reject Jesus Christ in this life, uh, the greatest sin you will ever commit in this life is rejecting Jesus Christ and not believing in him. And that's why you will go to hell. Because the world has never seen a show of love like God showed for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Dear friend, notice that Jesus Christ said, whosoever. The word whosoever means anybody at any time. Red, yellow, black, or white, we're all precious in God's sight. Whosoever, next word, believeth. The word believeth simply means to trust in, to have faith in. Who? Jesus Christ. Whosoever believeth in him, and notice how that it, once you believe in Jesus Christ, dear friend, your destination changes from hell to heaven. The Bible says, whosoever believeth in him should not perish. That means you will not go to hell, but have everlasting life in heaven. It is as simple as that. So, dear friend, believe in your heart on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ suffered, bled, and died on the cross for your sins was buried and rose from the dead by the power of God for you so that you can live forever with him. Pray and ask him to come into your heart to save your soul today, and he will. For Romans 10, 9 and 13 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou you shalt be saved. Saved from what? Saved from hell. Save to what? Save to heaven. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So, dear friend, while you're believing in your heart in Jesus Christ, remember that John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God who hath, who hath, who hath taken away the sin of the world. Jesus Christ paid your sin debt. Jesus Christ suffered, bled, and died on the cross for your sins. You don't have to go to a church building and you don't have to go run to a church building this morning and try to make it official. You can get saved right where you are. I got saved in an Air Force dorm room after spending my life in church. Church membership can't save you. Giving millions of dollars to the church can't save you. Getting baptized can't save you. All of those things are maybe good things to do. And they're wonderful things to do after you get saved. But you cannot do those things to get saved. You can't do any good works or give any money or uh, join any church to get saved. That won't work. 
you need to simply believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and what he did for you and call on his name in prayer and ask him to save you. And I'll be more than happy to lead you in the Lord's prayer. Somebody led me, millions of others have been led this way, and you can be led this way as well as you believe in your heart in Jesus Christ, that he suffered, bled, and died on the cross for your sins, was buried, and rose on the third day by the power of God. Follow me in prayer. Repeat after me phrase by phrase and mean it from your heart. Be sincere. Holy Father God, I acknowledge that I am a sinner and that I have done evil in your sight. Holy Father God, I admit that I have broken those commandments that the preacher talked about earlier from your word. For Jesus Christ's sake, please have mercy and grace upon my soul. Please forgive me of all of my sins. As I now believe with all of my heart in your Holy Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who suffered, bled, and died on the cross for my sins, who was buried and rose on the third day by your power, Lord Jesus Christ, please come into my heart and into my spirit and save my soul today. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to truly repent of all of my sins and help me to turn from my evil life and to follow you in the new life, Lord Jesus. For it is in Jesus Christ's name I do pray and for his sake. Amen. Now, dear friend of mine, if you believed in your heart in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that he suffered, bled, and died on the cross for your sins, was buried and rose from the dead by the power of God. Allow me to say to you congratulations, dear friend, on doing the most important thing in life, and that is believing in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, please go to gospellightsociety.com and read my book titled What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. It is free of charge. You will never be asked a dime for it. Just read it and grow in the grace of God. For Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, I am the door by me of any man into in. He shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Now, dear friends, if you have trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, uh, today, please email us and let us know so that we can rejoice with you and send you some free material to help you grow in the faith. And if you have any prayer requests, uh, please send those in as well. Email those to us and let us uh, know about that so that we can pray for you until you tell us to stop. Now, at this time, we're going to resume the standing between the living and the dead service already in progress at the scripture and the sense.
ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, uh, this is Daniel White, the third president of Gospel Light Society International with the Scripture and the Sense podcast, episode number 809. where I simply read the Word of God and give the sense of it based on an authoritative commentary source such as the Bible knowledge commentary and or the Matthew Henry commentary. Beloved, this podcast is based upon Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 8, where it says, Ezra and the Levites read in the book in the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. Uh, And so therefore the aim of this podcast is that through the simple reading of the Word of God and the giving of the sense of it, it is my humble prayer that the church would be revived and that the world would be awakened and saved from the wrath of God to come and from the eternal burning hell by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ who preached the gospel first and best when he said in John 3.16 the most loving words, the most important words and the most wonderful words ever said to mankind in the history of the world at John 3.16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Today, beloved, we're reading Zechariah chapter 1, verse 20. Let's pray. Holy Father God, we praise you and we thank you for your holy gospel. Save those who are lost, revive those who are saved. Give us your energy, your strength, your discipline, your grace, the power of your Holy Spirit to read your Holy Word, to understand it, and to apply it to our lives, and to share it with others, and to preach your Holy Gospel. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for sake. Amen. Verse 20 reads of Zechariah chapter 1, And the Lord showed me four carpenters. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Christ to Jesus. Uh, that was Zechariah chapter 1, verse 20. Now here is the sense of it. Here is the understanding of it. With the help of the power of the Holy Ghost, of course, and also the Bible knowledge commentary, because we do believe that other people have the power of the Holy Spirit besides us. It goes on to say, it goes on to say, the Hebrew word for craftsman indicates workmen skilled in wood, stone, or metal, since the material of which the horns are composed is not mentioned. The general translation craftsman is appropriate. The RSV translates the word smiths, apparently assuming the horns were iron. Let's pray. Holy Father God, we praise you and we thank you for a better understanding of that verse. Help us, Lord, to uh, remember it, meditate on it, and help us to learn more about it as well with the help and the power of your Holy Ghost. And Lord, we pray that uh, you would help us to teach your holy word in a, in a discipleship way and to preach and proclaim your holy gospel as you uh, lead us to do. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen.
ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, family, friends, and foes, even foes in the family. Uh, this is Daniel White the Third, President of Gospel Light Society International, with the White House Family Devotional, reading of Charles Haddon Spurgeon's classic book, Morning and Evening. This is the podcast, and this is episode number 421. The Prince of Preachers chose for our scripture reading and our devotional reading today, Psalm 73, 23. Nevertheless, I am continually with thee. Thou hast holy me by my right hand. Nevertheless, as if notwithstanding all of the foolishness and ignorance which David had just been confessing to God, not one atom the less was it true and certain that David was saved and accepted and that the blessing of being constantly in God's presence was undoubtedly his. Fully conscious of his own lost estate and of the deceitfulness and vileness of his nature, Yet by a glorious outburst of faith, he sings, Nevertheless, I am continually with thee. Believer, you are forced to enter into Asaph's confession and acknowledgement. Endeavor in like spirit to say, Nevertheless, since I belong to Christ, I am continually with God. By this is meant continually upon his mind. He is always thinking of me for my good. Continually before his eye, the eye of the Lord never sleepeth, but is perpetually watching over my welfare. Continually in his hand, so that none shall be able to pluck me thence. Continually on his heart, worn there as a memorial, even as the high priest bore the names of the twelve tribes upon his heart forever. Thou always thinkest of me, O God. The bowels of thy love continually yearn toward me. Thou art always making providence work for my good. Don't forget that. Allow me to say that to you again. I read that to you again. Thou art always making providence work for my good. Now you think about that. Thou hast set me as a signet upon thine arm. Thy love is strong as death. Many waters cannot quench it. Neither can the floods drown it. Surprising grace, thou seest me in Christ. And though in myself abhorred, thou beholdest me as wearing Christ's garments, and washed in his blood, and thus I stand accepted in thy presence. I am thus continually in thy favor, continually with thee. Here is comfort for the tried and afflicted soul, vexed with the tempest within. Look at the calm without, nevertheless. O oh, say it in thy heart, and take the peace it gives. Nevertheless, I am continually with thee. Shall we pray? Holy, holy.
Holy Father God, we praise you and we thank you so much for this time together around and with your holy word. And thank you, Lord, for reminding us, in spite of ourselves, nevertheless, you are with us and we're with you through Jesus Christ. We praise you and we thank you so much for that today. Help us to walk in it throughout this day. For your glory, praise, and honor. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we're going to the family verses. And how fitting it is to read this part of the family verses today. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 20. Please take heed to these verses regarding not only your church, but your family and your individual life. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all taking the shield of faith. Wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Ladies and gentlemen, let me just say this to you. If you are a child of God and you sense a darkness last night, on Saturday night, for those of you who are pastors and preachers, you sensed it all day yesterday. It started on Friday. You are sensing in strange ways, pastors and preachers, men of God, families that are serving God. You are sensed that that darkness will sometimes come through your wife. That darkness will sometimes come through one of your teenage children or uh, more than one. It, it never comes through the young children who <clears throat> are between the ages of you know, 3 and 10, 11, 12, their hearts are still pure. And they're ready to serve God, man, any way that you want to serve the Lord. They're excited. But when they get into their teen years, the devil has access to them. And you will sense a coldness and a darkness every Friday because the devil hates Friday because that's the day Jesus Christ died. He hates Saturday because it's the Sabbath and he hates Sunday because it is Resurrection Sunday, the day Jesus rose from the dead. And he's going to challenge you, and he's going to attack you, and he's going to use the weakest link in your family 
uh, to try to hinder you from doing God's will. Just remember that you don't wrestle against flesh and blood. This is where most families get destroyed. Just remember it is the devil doing that. And he's trying to keep you and your family from worshiping God and praising God in the spirit of, uh, of truth. With the spirit of truth and love. And so make sure you keep that in mind. Uh, let's pray now for some families that are suffering uh, the loss of loved ones because of the coronavirus plague. And let's pray for a few other people as well. Holy Father God, we pray in the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray for all of your children who name your name. Help us all to humble ourselves, to pray, to seek your face, to turn from our wicked ways, and to repent and get back to you. Our first love, let your will be done. And Lord, we pray for all people who are in government, save those who are lost, revive those who are saved. Uh, Lord, uh, we pray for salvation and spiritual family and life, protection and provision, uh, mental and physical, financial and material blessings upon them and upon all of your saints who stand for you. And we pray that you'll lead God and direct all government officials in the way that you want them to go and not in the way they may want to go. We pray for the salvation of the lost in this country and around the globe, for the revival of the saved in this country and around the globe. We pray for the healing of the sick in this country and around the globe. If uh, they are your children, Lord, help them to call for the elders of the church and help them, Lord, to confess their sins and repent so that they can be healed and raised up in answer to prayer. And Holy Father God, we pray that you would comfort those who are grieving and uh, who are mourning the death of loved ones because of this uh, painful coronavirus plague. And we pray, Lord, for all people. Millions are hurting this morning. The people may have died last April, but they're still missing those people. Uh, Lord God in heaven, draw them to yourself for salvation and comfort. We pray for a few by name. We pray for the family and friends of California police officer Santiago Carrillo. We pray for the family and friends of California police Officer Patricia Gullion. We pray for the family and friends of Florida Police Officer Louis Levatino. We pray for the family and friends of Texas mother Margaret Gomez. And we pray for the family and friends of Texas teacher Ernest uh, Tejeda. We commit all of these souls into your hands. Let your will be done in their lives and in ours. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, may God bless you throughout this day. By the grace of God, I'll be back tonight to preach at a seven, uh, seven o'clock central, uh, eight o'clock uh, Eastern, five o'clock Pacific. And uh, uh, if you have a prayer list, please put us on your prayer list. Uh, and make sure you pray for yourself and your family without ceasing throughout this day. God bless you, dear friends. Until next time.